How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the most profitable low level bosses that you can get into without having stupidly high stats and still make a good amount of money to help progress your account. I know quite a lot of you low level players that don't have like say 90 plus combat stats including tier 90 weapons, overloads and tier 95 curses, all that sort of good stuff. Quite often think like I can't do any PVM, I can't make money through that just yet, I need to level up my account, I need to unlock all this stuff before I can even start PVM and then I can make the real money. So before that, all you do is really look at money making guides on YouTube or look at money making guides on the wiki, I suppose. They're pretty much the same thing. And this can lead to you guys doing the same thing for hours on end, just trying to make enough money for one unlock. Now, th that's all well and good. That's absolutely fine, except the fact that it can get really boring. Like if you're just doing the same thing for five mil an hour, let's say you're doing something crazy like cutting granite. I'm so that's just a lot of fun. I always use this as an example, but you know, cutting granite or that tanning like dragon hides into leathers or that sort of thing, or going out and collecting any sort of like raw resource or something like that it can get really repetitive really boring and a lot of the time it doesn't really benefit your account in any way whatsoever so what i wanted to do is make a video today talking about the bosses you can do with lower combat stats and make a decent amount of money while doing so so let's talk about that and let's see what bosses you can work towards which bosses you can aim to learn which will not only one help you get better at pvm so you're ready for the higher bosses when you do unlock them but also two give you that chance of getting that big drop that'll give you a good amount of money and help your account unlock the next bit of gear a hell of a lot quicker than standing at the grand exchange and processing stuff but anyway if you enjoy the video if it does help you out leave a like on it do subscribe if you are new to the channel also i have started a clan so if any of you low level players want to join that and maybe even do some bossing with the people in the clan just guest in the clan called the init and you can ask for an invite there even if you don't want to join if you're in a clan already you can just guest in there people will still be happy to take you to bosses but anyway that's enough of a long intro <laughs> let's get started shall we Okay, so the requirements that I'm going to be talking about for this video, you can probably go ahead and just use 80 combat stats as the base stats that I'm going to be mentioning for every single boss. So if you have 80 plus combat stats in any style that works at the boss, then you're good to go. Also, I'd probably recommend you do have 67 summoning, which isn't too hard to get, but this will let you have a decent beast of burden, which will be able to hold plenty of food for you to keep you there in the fight a little bit longer. As for herb lore, obviously, if you have overloads, then just bring them. But thing is, most of you guys, if you have 80 combat stats, probably don't have overloads. So you can actually buy potions called Grand Potions off of the Grand Exchange. These are really good stat boosters. And honestly, you don't have to have any uh, herb lore experience to actually make these. So if you don't have access to things like extremes, then I would suggest bringing these with you instead keep in mind though you would not be able to use sarah in brews if you are bringing these so you will just have to bring along normal food probably like sharks or something but that wouldn't be in too much of an issue you may just have to bank a little bit more often but seeing as we have wars retreat now it really shouldn't make much of a difference for you as for prayer as long as you have protection prayers and of course just use the stat boosting prayers that you do have access to you should be absolutely fine but again if you have 95 then you're already good to go okay so that's like the requirements out of the way it'll be the same stuff carried across to every single boss so don't worry if you don't have anything more than those these are pretty much the stats that i used when i had the series that i did for low level bossing as well so i know this works you'll be absolutely fine Okay, so the first boss I'm going to talk about is going to be Kriara. Now, at the same time, while we're talking about Kriara, this could work for the same thing on each God Wars 1 bosses. I'm just going to cover them all as kind of like a whole, but we're going to focus on Kriara as Kree does have the most valuable drops in God Wars 1, and that is the reason that I'm telling you that this would be the best place for you to come. Now, to do this, what I would suggest having is, considering we're talking about 80 plus combat stats, you could definitely do this with Chaotic Crossbows and some Anima Core Armor. This will be the same stats as uh, Pernix Armor, I do believe. However, even if this is too expensive for you i have no doubt that you could probably do this in armor del armor as well having the vampirism aura here will be super helpful as you will be committing to pretty much a full trip when you do come as you have to get 40 kill count to enter the room once you're in the room if you teleport out you do lose that kill count and you will have to re-get your 40 kill count to enter again so having the vampirism aura will extend your kill time here and allow you to stay for most of the hour if not all of it so you don't have to constantly get kill count to come back in every 10 minutes now of course what you're hunting for here is the rare drops from the armadil table basically all of the armadil drops here are valuable to get all of them are around about three mil each except for the chain and the legs these go for about eight mil each at the moment so considering how easy this boss is you can pretty much stand in the corner of the room make sure your stats are boosted make sure you got vampirism on and just focus on killing kriara once kriara is dead kill off the little side minions as well pick up any loot that's worth picking up and just keep repeating this if you do have access to stuff like death swiftness then i do suggest that you do use that whenever you get chance as it will help speed up the kills as well and if you have things like adrenaline potions and stuff bring a couple of those along with you as well it'll just make your life a little bit easier getting you some faster kills and the more kills you can get per hour the better your chances of getting a drop are 
Valkyrie Arrow is not only great for money when you're a lower level, but it's also really good ranged experience as well. So not only will you be working on making a good amount of money, but you'll also be leveling up your ranged as well as your defense if you have that ticked as well. And you'll be able to push yourself to a better position for PVM later on, ready for some higher level bosses too. As mentioned before, this pretty much applies to all God Wars 1 bosses. These are all fairly easy bosses to do and they do all have their own drop table, which is de decently valuable. However, like I say, Kriara does have the most valuable drops out of the lot of them. And so that's why I focused on Kriara for this bit. Okay, next up, I'm gonna be talking about Vindicta. Now, Vindicta, I'm sure most of you guys probably realized this was gonna be on here. And of course, it is such a good boss to learn as a low level boss because you can make an absolute fortune doing this boss. Honestly, it is not that difficult. It does introduce you to some mechanics as well, so you can get used to doing that. It also gets you used to using things like Surge, using your defensive abilities, so there's definitely a lot to learn while doing this boss fight. It is a boss that I would always recommend new players go to if they are practicing PVM and want to get into higher level stuff as well. But not only that, the drops that you can get from here are ridiculously high in value, and they will stay high in value due to their use in making Aftershock for the invention perk. So you'll always have items from here that are worth getting, as the value will not drop, because people are constantly breaking down these items to get invention materials. Okay, so Vindicta, what can you get from here and why should you come to Vindicta? So the main two reasons you will be coming here is the Dragon Rider Lance, which is sitting around about 40 mil at the moment, and the Crest of Zaros, which is sitting at about 35 mil as well. As a lower level player, whose bank is probably looking at things like Chaotix and maybe Bandos Armor, for example, as your main gear, this will be a huge increase in bank size and it will definitely help you improve on upgrades super fast. If you get one of the Dragon Rider Lancers at 40 mil or 42 mil, as the Discord price checker is showing at the moment, you will actually be able to buy yourself straight away a drag or rapier which is also sitting at 42 mil as well i assume also between the time of you getting one of these uh, you'll also get a little bit of money from the boss as well as vindict is actually pretty decent money even without a drop so this would cover for any slight differences or one or two mil differences between the drop and the drag or but if that gets you your main hand drag or that is going to help out a hell of a lot Offhand drag ores are a bit more expensive than the main hands. Uh, they are looking around about 20 mil more than the main hands. So if you get yourself a second or third drop while putting the time in here, you can definitely easily work towards one of those two. And unlocking dual drag ores for an account that's basically just reaching 90 attack as you have been, been here since level 80 working towards it, it will definitely make your PVM experience a lot better. Keep in mind though, there is other items that you could buy instead. You don't have to spend all the money on drag ores. You could go ahead, buy yourself a Masuta's War Spear or buy yourself the Blade of uh, Nemora and the Blade of Avarice from the Twin Furies, as these will be a lot cheaper options and will still give you a decent damage boost and make your life a bit easier while farming out more Vindicta or other bosses as well. Now keep in mind you don't have to use melee at Vindicta, I would highly recommend that you do, it makes it quite a bit easier, but personally I use magic here and I've also used ranged here as well in the past and they both work absolutely fine, it is not an issue. But 100% Vindicta is a boss that you can definitely do with those stats at 80 combat stats with only 67 summoning and using grand potions. I've done this plenty of times on my low level bossing account and it's worked out pretty well. You can definitely come here, grind out a drop, make yourself some good money. And also, like I say, Vindicta has a few mechanics that you will have to learn and it will absolutely help you in your road to doing end game PVM by learning how mechanics work, how to use defensive abilities to reduce your food intake and all that good stuff. Okay, so next up, I would suggest that you do head towards somewhere like Hellware. Now, Hellware will actually make you a little bit less money than Vindicta will. It's pretty comparable. It's not way too much difference, but there's a reason that I would suggest you do come here when you are doing the lower level bossing because Hellware is a huge stepping stone, in my opinion, going from low PVM going into high PVM. So the reason being is Hellware has a lot more mechanics than Vindicta. So yes, already I'm kind of making it out sounding like there's going to be more work and it's going to be less money. Why the frick would you do hellware okay so like i say and i always mention this progressing yourself and progressing your account is something that is going to pay off in the long run and you can still make a good amount of money here the drops here are around about between 10 to 16 mil but there's a quite a lot of them you've got both of these swear elders weapons which is 11 mil and 8 mil and then you've also got the crest of seren sitting at a nice 16 and a half mil but then not only that you do as well have the serenic essence which is also sitting at a nice 6 mil as well so there's actually really good amount of money here you can definitely still make a lot of money on the common drops as well but the main reason i would suggest you come here when you're making money is you're going to be forced to use things like resonance 
instance, use things like devotion. Make sure you're using your prayers at the right time, moving out of the way of the acid pools that do get put on the ground. You will have to watch your sort of positioning, make sure you're using things to deal with the wolves. There's a lot of stuff going on, but it's not a stupidly punishing fight if you do mess up. So you're not going to get absolutely one hit and wrecked if you mess up a mechanic, but dealing with the mechanics properly will make the fight a lot more efficient, make you be able to stay here for a lot longer, and it does make your life a hell of a lot better knowing how to deal with the mechanics. So you will learn them and it will pay off in the long run. When you go to places like Araxi, in the future in Hunt of Even Better Drops, it will pay off because you will learn things like using Resonance which will help you on the web to keep your health up. Things like using Devotion to reduce the damage you take throughout the entire fight, you'll be using a lot at Araxi as well. Positioning, making sure you don't get screwed up by all the cleaves and the insta-kill spiders, it will all pay off, it will all be worth it. And I highly recommend that if you are looking to get into high level PVM but you're not quite there yet, Hellware is 100% the boss to be making some money at because you will learn a lot about PVM while you're here as well. But as I said before, even the common drops here are really, really good. Grimy Lantadime, for example, they are dropped between 650k to 800k batches. So you can get eight, between 80 and 100 and it is such good money. And most of the drops here are noted as well. They all, in fact, they all stack. Every single drop here does stack, so you won't have to bank, you can stay here as long as you can, and it just stacks up in your inventory nicely. One thing that I forgot to mention for Vindicta, which also applies here as well, is in God Wars 2, you do still have to get a kill count to enter the room, however, if you teleport out to bank, you will keep that kill count for the entire hour, you spend the kill count on your instance, and you can get back in that instance as long as it is still available. So you will not have to re-kill count every single time you bank, but you will have to for each hour that you are here. However, getting kill count in God Wars 2 is super fast as there is a multiplier which helps speed up the process a frick ton. Okay, so those are the three bosses, or I guess there's more than three seeing as God Wars 1, you could do any of them, that I would recommend you do as a low level player looking to make some money. Vindicta and Hellway are going to be your two great keys to making a ton of money, whereas God Wars 1 at Kriara, for example, will be a lot sort of more chilled out, a lot easier, and a lot more of a steady income coming into your bank, seeing as it's something that I would say you'd start off from there, and then you'd work your way up to Vindicta and then Hellway as well. However, once you've finished these bosses, once you're confident with them, once your account has got a little bit more money on it, and once you've got maybe level 90 in your combat style of choosing, I would then suggest you head over to places like Araxi, uh, maybe even a Nex as a duo, don't go as a solo just yet, unless you are for some reason ridiculously good at this game and you don't need any of this good gear to do solo Nex, I would suggest doing that as a duo, but Araxi is great to learn when you're finishing off somewhere like God Wars 2, because one, you can make a lot of money here, but two, it's not that difficult of a boss. The last phase is probably where you'll meet your most challenge when you're trying to do things like prayer flicking but otherwise you don't need great gear to do a raxi in all honesty you could do this in chaotics with uh, armadillo armor as well so you could definitely try this out if you wanted to before hellwear but i would suggest you do learn hellwear and vindicta first as the mechanics there will help you a hell of a lot when dealing with mechanics at araxi so i really hope this video has achieved its goal of helping you understand where you can focus your time and effort in the game to make some money and progress your account without having to just stand at the grand exchange pro stuff or look up other money making methods as well don't get me wrong some of these methods that you can find are really good they will make you a nice steady five to six mil an hour and on a good day they can even make you up to 10 mil depending on what it is however they usually don't progress your account they usually don't help you learn things like pvm as well and honestly guys the end game the amount the way you make a lot of money is going to be end game pvm of course there's still other ways to do it without being a pvmer but if you want to make an absolute ton of money and get into pvm then the best way to do it is to get into it early practice your pvm skills Skills while also making a decent amount of money as well and then once you've got those big drops you're already on your way to getting into high level pvm as well but anyway i hope this video did help if it did leave a like on it do subscribe if you are new and also if you are interested in joining the channel members their names will be on screen right now thank you all so so much but if you're interested in joining them and seeing what perks they get while supporting the channel click the join button by the sub button and also don't forget if you want to learn pvm if you want to boss with some other people who are more experienced maybe join the clan the Inits, as a guest and you'll be able to ask for an invite there or even just pvm with them as a guest we are very welcoming to anybody who joins and i hope that you do have a pleasant stay when you do actually join in there but anyway that's it from me today guys i really do appreciate you taking the time to watch the video i hope it helped you out and i will see you all in the next one see you later guys bye